This is Doug Lindsay with Autofocus Cars and Vids, and this is my long-delayed, long-awaited, one-year daily driver update for my 2014 Porsche Boxster S. Now, I did a six-month update after I'd had it and put 5,000 miles on it. Now I've put 17,000 miles on it. I bought it in June, July 2020, and now it's December 2021, so it's been more than a year, almost a year and a half, but we're going to give you basically all that's happened in the last year. Before we get into the specifics and break it into individual pieces, I guess there's a couple of big questions that people interested in the car would probably just want to know. Is it special? To me, yes. Is it fun? I think it's a blast. Is it fast? Well, mine is the PDK, so it's actually faster than a stick shift, but it feels less fast because of the PDK. So in the stick, you get to pull it back into second and have your head pop off the you know, the headrest behind you and jamming up into third when you get near the red line. The stick gives a sensation of speed that's different than the PDK. The PDK is so smooth where you simply look down and you were going 20 and now you're going 80. So it's a fast car. It's not among the fastest. It's, it's not a GT500. Uh, what I've noticed is that I'm still leaving acceleration on the table, that I'm not at full throttle often enough for me to say, hey, I need to look at a faster car to have more fun. How has my CPO warranty gone? Was it worth it for me to buy the certified pre-owned car? Yes. There was a problem with the door card. It was coming up along the sill where the window is, and they replaced the whole door card, and that was $2,300. It cost me nothing. And so, you know, if it was my car and it wasn't under warranty, I'd have probably tried to find somebody to glue it back down, but the way the dealer did it, they just put a new card in. Now, I have gotten my money's worth from that certified warranty, but there's been no mechanical problems with the car. Just a couple of cosmetic things. The clip on the sun visor, again, that thing had pulled loose at some point over the years. So, is it good on track? Well, yes. It certainly reminded me very quickly that the car is far better than I am. And you can have it at 6,000 or 7,000 RPM all day. The car didn't overheat. There was nothing dramatic. Because the car has power at the top of the rev range, it's such an amazing thing. As the RPMs build, you know, everything about it builds. The intensity builds, the acceleration builds, the torque builds, the speed builds. So it's really a rewarding experience. I know turbo cars have a big shove in the middle, and some of them die up top. This thing is just the opposite. This is the 3.4 liter flat six from the base Carrera that they put in the Boxster S and detuned, and it's a blast. So the track day I did, the track weekend I did was in June. And what's interesting about that is you have to get a tech inspection to go out on track to make sure the car is safe. And I bundled that in with the annual maintenance. So we got the oil change, and you know the other things that were on my list at however many years the car old is or however many miles it was at you know and then we threw in some other pieces so a complete brake fluid flush because you have to have brake fluid that's less than a year old if you're going to go drive on the track further they took off my all season tires and stored them at the dealership and put on my summer tires so when you add those pieces and the, the cost of storing the tires at the dealer to the annual maintenance, something that would have been two, three hundred bucks became a thousand bucks. Before I took it out and on track, besides that tech inspection, I also got a paint protection film because I didn't want to kick up some gravel or be behind some car and end up with a circumstance where I had paint problems or needed a respray or something like that. So I got the whole front clip done, the whole front end of the car and the mirrors and the rocker panels along the side. And that ended up being a couple hundred dollars north of 2000 And this was an Expel film. It has a warranty. If there's a problem, they will fix it. After the track day, I could see that part of the PPF was coming up in one of the compound curves. So a curve is that. But a compound curve is multiple curves in multiple dimensions. And that's where my PPF was coming up. The solution they had was pretty simple. They went at it with a razor blade and basically cut the strip off. And so, but the PPF has done a fine job. There was one little imperfection and they simply used a heat gun for a few seconds and it was gone. But when you're buying a PPF, but what I was actually buying was the service of protection. So if I have a problem with my paint protection film, 
the place that installed it for me will fix it or will replace it. I did a high performance driver's education weekend put on by the Porsche Club. This means you're in the car, you've got a helmet, there's an instructor next to you, they have a helmet, you each have a headset and you're talking, and you are out on the track with them driving. And so there were 13 of us in the group who'd never been on the track before and we were out there just going after it. And again, you know, think this, the car is sitting at 6,000 RPM all day. It's a convertible, but the top is up and, you know, it was a blast. It was an amazing day and an amazing event. When I got the email for high performance driver education, it was simply abbreviated HPDE, which I couldn't think of anything more boring because high density polyethylene is HDPE. So I ended up on the wait list because when that showed up in my inbox, I just kept scrolling and I missed that chance. The wait list, I waited, I was on it, I got in and I got to do this weekend. They had instruction, and the instruction sounds as simple as can be. You know, if someone needs to pass you, you wave them by. Okay, that's fine. I know how to use my arm and my elbow. This should be a breeze. So now you're on the track, and there's a, you know, a, a Camaro ZL1 1LE behind you that wants to pass. And you go, I'm going to let him by. And that's when I find out that my forearm and wrist are longer than the Boxster's window opening. So now I'm driving with one hand with a car on my ass and I'm trying to figure out how to get my arm out the window to, throw, to, to wave them by. So things got pretty complicated pretty quickly and that was what was fascinating about driving on the track is it was so different. Use cruise control when you come home from the track because your sense of speed is warped. But I come off the track at 5 p.m. and I hear a whistle. And that whistle is air coming out of my driver rear tire. A cotter pin, you know, some sort of metal pin on the track had pierced my tire. And now I've got a mess on my hands because it's 5 p.m., people are going home, and my tire is losing air fast. And to tow a Boxster, you have to put it on a flatbed. So that was gonna be quite an evening. But I managed to reach out to some people and talk to them, and it was basically we all pulled together and came up with what we needed. Some guy had an impact driver. Another guy had a jack we could use. Somebody had a, a plug kit. And so they plug the tire and refill it up with air through the air system at the track, and that means I can drive home. But what it does mean also is I can't go drive it on the track the next day because I'm not going to drive on a plugged tire. And that meant I would miss the second track day. But the organizer of the event says to me, you know, I have four Cayman rims and tires in my basement, and you can borrow them. Well, Porsche manufacturer rims are about five grand, and the tires are about 1,200 bucks. So a guy I barely know and just met offered me $6,200, $6,500 worth of stuff, and when they put it on my car, I'm going to drive it as aggressively as I've ever driven it. And I thought about that, and I thought, that's a lot to ask. Plus, this is asking people I don't know to change eight tires in the sun. So it sounded like a big deal, and I said no. I sent a friend to go get some footage of the event, and he sent me a text saying, hey, I know you said no, but the guy brought the tires anyway. So at that point, you know, it felt rude to say no. I went out there. We put his tires and rims on. I drove, and at the end of the day, we swapped them back. And so the Porsche Club was really full of amazing, accessible people who cared. They love being on the track and they love driving and they were able to introduce what they care about to someone new, which was me. So I spent the summer hitting the back roads when I can. We have a wine country here and I don't know how great the wine is, but the roads are amazing. So lots of hills, lots of curves, and just great roads to drive on. So those I hit. I also got to ride a ferry across the Mississippi River and come down the Great River Road, you know, which is just a long, straight shot right along the banks of the Mississippi. So that was a blast. And so I got to know the car a lot better. And after the High Performance Drivers Education event, I had a better feel for how to drive it as well. So those events do pay off. And I'd love to do another one. I was supposed to do one in the fall, but when I came outside one day, I saw that someone backed into my car in the parking garage and didn't leave a note. I called my insurance agent. I called my buddy who's an insurance agent. I followed their advice. I looked up online. It said the same thing. 
go file a police report. I did. Then I told my insurance about it. Now there's claims started. The problem is this isn't a Camry and this isn't 1996. It's 2021 and this is a Porsche. It's the era of Carfax. If you have a dirty Carfax, you can have diminished value. The dent's smaller than my fist. It's not a big deal. My thought was, why should I get it fixed and then take a $2,000 hit in resale value? And I swung by my friends at RP Exotics and they know a lot more about cars than I do. Their estimate was a $10,000 diminishment in value. The offer for the car versus the offer for the car with a dirty Carfax was $10,000 less. But since there was now an insurance claim and a police report and all this other stuff, I'm on the hook potentially for this situation. The best move would have been to just pay cash, get it fixed, and go on with my life. And that could have been done potentially in, in a couple weeks at the most. But now we're in a mess. And if we're in a mess, I'm gonna yeah, I'll say it. If we're in a mess, I'm gonna fucking win. And I zoomed in on the right spot. And I studied the dent. And I studied the situation. And I concluded from the height of the dent and where there was damage, and also where there was no damage, that this 28-inch impact basically could have come only from a Chevy work truck bumper. But I was able to track every driver of every truck in the 12 or so hours of window where my car could have been hit and I started tracking each one. And I watched 55 hours of surveillance video in fast forward because my car wasn't on the footage. I built a circumstantial case that ended up in a five page report with several pages of photographs to follow to show evidence that he hit my car. I turned that into the police and he confronted the driver and the driver of the truck confessed. So now his insurance company is responsible. Now they have to pay to fix it and they have to pay the diminished value. It's December and my car still hasn't been fixed. Over the summer, I also did a road trip. So this was my first road trip. I've driven, you know, an hour here, an hour there, and then of course hours on the back roads racing around, but this was the first road trip in the car. Drove from my part of the country over to Knoxville, Tennessee, and hit Tail of the Dragon, this famous road that has more than 300 turns in a small number of miles. It's frankly a better motorcycle road than it is a car road because the turns are so tight. It was a blast. So how was the Boxster on a road trip? Well, the seats, I have the 14-way adjustable seats, and I describe them as the world's greatest bus terminal seats. You know, those sort of fiberglass seats that have a molded shape to them? This is what it's like. Like, you can adjust the Boxster seats any way in the world so that it fits you perfectly, and it holds you like a glove. And it does everything except it's still not soft. So it's very comfortable, but after a few hours, you want to be somewhere else. You want to get out and stretch your legs, and all the cars you passed pass you again, and then you get to get back in your, your bus terminal seat in your amazing car and drive on. So I got 30 miles to the gallon out on the highway. I get 20 when I'm driving in the back roads, but I got 30 on that trip easily, and that was pretty cool. So it gets good fuel economy, and this is the 2014 with the flat six. This isn't the four, and it isn't one of the newer ones that have cylinder deactivation. So goodness knows how good their fuel economy is. The PDK helps, but you know it gets good fuel economy. So then on the back roads, it was amazing. I did Tail of the Dragon, and you'll see a little footage. I went to scout it so that I could drive it and film it for real the next day. And so I went at the end of the day, pretty close to dusk. Like for example, there's all these guys taking pictures on the side of the road and posting them. They'd all already gone home. That's how late it was. So I drive Tail of the Dragon, it's very tight. Then the highways open up and they're even more fun. But I missed my turn. And then I got stuck in a mountain squall. And then I lost GPS. 10.07, but that's central time, so it's 11.07. I'm on my way back to the hotel. I drove Tail of the Dragon. Then I got lost, then I got stuck in the rain and my GPS couldn't connect. I think Tail of the Dragon was about 60 miles from where I started. The Robbinsville or whatever, the, the name of the town. I had to get gas, but let's check this out. So 446, that means 546, but that means 
that I've been on the road for five hours and driven 218 miles. <laughs> and it's supposed to be an hour journey and an hour back. So I don't know where the other three hours went and I don't know where the other hundred miles went. But they were amazing roads. The rain, when it was raining, was horrible. I mean, 30 miles an hour and I was worried about hydroplaning. I got a lot more driving than I bargained for. The next day, I didn't go driving because I had to drive to, to Nashville and pick up a friend at the airport. So that was my whole Tale of the Dragon experience. Speaking of rain, the Boxster top is waterproof, meaning water doesn't get in the cabin, but it's also fabric. And it turns out you're supposed to waterproof the fabric of the top. So I washed the car yesterday, and we've given it plenty of time to dry. Now we're going to tape off anywhere where the convertible top comes close to the glass or the paint job. And we're going to use newspaper or whatever we have. It's got a brush, a spray cleaner, and now the protectant. Well, I did it outside because you're not supposed to use this thing in an enclosed area. It's overwhelmingly flammable and, you know, there's a lot on the can. But guess what? The slightest breeze makes it a disaster. So I spent forever taping the car and there was still overspray, a lot of it. And so small amounts of wind meant that I would have to spray while I held my breath and then walk away a few paces and breathe. I had a step stool that I stood on so I could reach every part of the roof. And after hours of this, I give the product a D because it's simply not very waterproof. Maybe it does an amazing job, but if I did it again, I would buy a waterproofer that came in a spritz bottle and pour it into a small tray and use a four inch roller. I've seen that, it's much easier, and you don't have to worry about overspray. So waterproofing your Boxster top is not hard, but it is annoying if there's any wind. Now I love the car and I love the flat six engine, but one of the things about my car is it doesn't have Porsche sports exhaust. So I could buy Porsche sports exhaust, they sell it and have the dealer install it. And that would be nice. But I also looked at aftermarket exhausts and I looked at two different kinds and one was made in, in Taiwan and shipped to the US and the other was made in Texas. And if you know anything about what's happening right now, container, container ship shipping prices are very high and there's a lot of delays. So I went with the Texas company. I went with FabSpeed and they are sending me a Valvetronic exhaust for my 981 Porsche Boxster S. So that's got the quiet mode and the loud mode. It came, I ordered it in August, the beginning of August, and it came after Thanksgiving. The first thing that was back ordered were the valves. Those are from England. Took a while. Then the exhaust tips. I wanted the stainless steel exhaust tips and not the carbon fiber ones. Those were delayed. But eventually everything came and it looked beautiful. So look for an unboxing video on that because the car makes great noise. It has a great induction noise. So when you hit the gas, that's what comes into the cabin. You hear the induction noise of the engine, the intake stuff. When the top is down, anything over 60 miles an hour, right now I don't hear any exhaust, I just hear wind, unless you're really getting after it. You're at 6,000 or 7,000 RPM. If you have the base Boxster without the Porsche sports exhaust, the best way to hear it is to have the windows down and the top up. But I can't wait to hear what it sounds like. And we're also getting a backup camera. Not the same day, but there'll be an install for that. Parking the Boxster when it doesn't have parking sensors or a backup camera is a bear. I learned how to parallel park. You put your hand on the wheel, your hand on the other seat, and you turn around. And when you do that, you see leather, carpet, and not much window, and convertible top. And this is going to make it better. Mechanically, the car has been flawless and it's been a blast. And whether you're driving it at four, or five, 6,000 RPM, whether you have it in manual mode, or whether you're just cruising on the highway, I thought about an aftermarket suspension because I grew up racing remote control cars and they had these amazing anodized aluminum coil over shocks. And I thought, man, that would be amazing. Like, to me, it appeals to bring that into my adult life. But a tiny amount of time on the track reminded me 
this car is far more competent and capable than I am. So maybe we'll change the exhaust, but leave the suspension the way it is for now. So leave some comments. Let me know what you think. This has been my experience over 15, 17,000 miles of driving the Boxster. It continues to put a smile on my face. I know in the world of sports cars, you know, there are far more exotic vehicles than this. People continue to give me compliments on it. It's this beautiful agate gray with the tan interior. People seem to like it. I love it, and it's just a blast. You know, would I have gotten a stick shift instead of the PDK? I don't know. I mean, this thing is so practical, so livable, and so engaging that I simply can't say that I would change it for another model that was very similar. Now, if you're talking about a Spider that has 100 more horsepower and, you know, the GT3 front end, now we have something to talk about. But for what it is, I have loved the car so much, and I plan to keep it. With the paint protection film, the exhaust, and the backup camera, that's the better part of $10,000. So you'll get the car and put 10 grand in it, and it will basically look and seem exactly the same, but it's safer, and it's protected, and it will make a better noise. And so that's what's coming in 2022, and maybe we'll think about a tune or something like that, because it is a detuned Carrera engine. But this car has just been a blast. So leave a comment, let me know how you're thinking, you know, like this channel. If people are watching, there's reason for me to make more of these videos. The car video YouTube community is actually a really fun one. And, you know, I might be a small part of it, but I'm happy to be a, a part of it. So this is Doug Lindsay with Autofocus Cars and Vids. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.